the big story that has every American's attention right now is the one that we see from the Washington Post today, Georgia shooting case will go to grand jury as disturbing video surfaces online. There's uh, a lot of interesting background in this, and it's one of these stories that, you know, it's kind of a distraction where we're led to this, this conference. Now, I don't want to say this is a case unworthy of attention. I, I, I don't mean that. Because there, there are lessons to be learned, important conclusions to take away, and it does highlight some very real problems with the government we live in. And you might think, well, Adam, this wasn't a cop shooting someone. This was, this was private citizens who went and shot someone. Now, a little more complicated than that. And a lot of this is obviously uh, a problem because this happened months ago. And it was just that video surfaced recently and is causing the outrage about this. So, a Georgia prosecutor on Tuesday said a grand jury should review the fatal shooting of 25-year-old Ahmad Arbery, who was killed in February after being chased by two armed men who told police he looked like a burglary suspect. The lack of charges thus far has enraged advocates across the country who have expressed deep frustration with both the shooting of the unarmed man and how the case has been handled. News around Arbery's killing reverberated Tuesday after a graphic video that appeared to depict the shooting went viral on social media. Lee Merritt, the family's attorney, shared the video Tuesday afternoon and said Arbery's family was forced to watch for the first time online. CJ, let's go to Twitter now and, and find the original video. This is uh, very disturbing. It, it, it's not uh, graphic, what you're about to see. I will give you a bit of a warning. Before you press play here, pause that, CJ. You're going to see uh, a man running down the street. You're going to see what looks like a cell phone recording from a vehicle behind the truck that the shooter was in. You're going to see the jogger running uh, around the truck, and you're going to see a struggle over a shotgun that ends with the shooting. It is violent, but not graphic. With that, CJ, press play. That's it. That's the whole thing. 28 seconds. What happened? Let's not work. Thank you. So, Mr. Arbery had not committed any crime. And there was no reason for these men to believe they had the right to stop him with weapons or to use deadly force in furtherance of their unlawful attempted stop. This is murder. That, according to attorney Merritt for the family. By all accounts, Arbery spent much of his spare time running for exercise in the city of Brunswick in Glynn County on Georgia's southeast coast. That was the case February 23 when Arbery was spotted jogging through his neighborhood by Gregory McMichael, who believed Arbery looked like a suspect in a spate of recent break-ins, according to a police report published by the New York Times. Yeah, <laughs> All you black dudes look the same. Yeah, it was a, it was a suspicious looking young black male. Uh, yeah, this is this is the heart of racism in America. Absolutely. Only one burglary was reported to the Glen County Police Department in the Satia Shores neighborhood between January 1, February 23. It involved a pistol taken from a pickup truck outside of Travis McMichael's home. So we had an individual who seemed to be a little sensitive. There was a gun missing from his home, although I wouldn't be entirely surprised if he later found that firearm attached to the belt of a pair of pants in his hamper. McMichael, 64, called his son, Travis McMichael, 34, and they armed themselves with a handgun and shotgun, respectively. Gregory McMichael told police they chased him in a truck, and Gregory 
told police that he shouted, stop, stop, we want to talk to you, before, according to their statements, they pulled up beside him in their truck. The report suggests the third person may have been involved in the pursuit. Travis stepped out of the truck with a shotgun, and that's when Gregory alleges that Arbery attacked Travis, and they began fighting over the shotgun. Travis Michael fired, McMichael fired twice. Arbery fell face down on the pavement and died of his wounds. And it seems like the video backs up the, the basics of that narrative. Of course, you don't have the uh, audio in that video. Gregory and McMichael didn't immediately respond to requests for comment, and Travis McMichael's listed number was disconnected. The County Police Department did not immediately return a request for comment late Tuesday. On Tuesday, District Attorney Tom Durden said that the case should be presented to a grand jury for consideration for criminal charges. And this is where things get interesting. Why had this not happened sooner? Well, they made all sorts of excuses to defend the criminals in this case. Now, they're trying to do this but in his statement, Merritt noted, this is the attorney for the victim, that grand juries in Georgia were temporarily suspended because of the coronavirus pandemic. Oh, yes, we're in martial law America now. And urged that the two men be taken into custody immediately pending their indictment. The statewide judicial emergency in Georgia was on Monday, extended until June 12th. Open season for criminals. So, <clears throat> the really interesting part here. Greg McMichael previously served as a former police detective and district attorney investigator in Brunswick. The AP reported that the district attorney for Glynn County, Jackie Johnson, recused herself from this case because McMichael worked as an investigator in her office and retired last year. Obviously, a lot of back and forth on this. A lot of posturing. A lot more to this story. But the takeaways, very simple. You cannot trust government to enforce the rule of law. And by that, I mean holding murderers accountable, because that's what this was. Now, was it manslaughter or murder? I don't know. I don't particularly care about that legal distinction, and neither does the natural law. This was an unjustified killing, and the killers should be held accountable. Because our system of justice is the American government's legal system, we don't have very much justice. What we have here is a socialization of justice services. We have a government monopoly, which leads to reduced services, especially for poor people. Rich people can afford lawyers. They can afford access to the legal system. If you're poor, not so much, which is why someone like the McMichaels here, would feel comfortable chasing down an unarmed man with guns because he might have stolen a gun at some prior date, not even in the middle of the theft, not even with any sign that he had a gun on him. He did not. And furthermore, what government does is keep us locked in a scarcity mentality where theft is a real problem. We are more than capable as a species of feeding, clothing, housing, every human on earth several times over, of removing all want and desperation that would lead to theft. And yet here we are in a world where some people think it's reasonable to chase someone down because they look like someone who might have stolen something maybe out of a truck at some prior date. I have to wonder, if this guy had a gun, had a handgun stolen out of his truck on his property, why did he not pursue the thief then? And by the way, this actually happened to me. When I was in college, I had a gun stolen out of my Ford Bronco. I actually chased the guy down, unarmed on campus, confronted him, and got the gun back peacefully, de-escalating, stopping the crime, not committing another one. For those of you who don't know this part of my backstory, this is why I didn't go back to Iraq because there was a campus police officer there who I should have run from, who instead I turned the handgun over to and then ended up getting in 
trouble with the Marine Corps and not deploying for a lot of messed up reasons that we won't get into right now. Obviously, there is an alternative here. There is no way a rational society would support a violent physical confrontation over a material loss. There's no need. The risk does not justify it. And in a society with a true free market, which includes a free market for justice services, which includes real accountability for people who are in that industry, we would not have a situation where police every day are able to kill innocent Americans. It's about a thousand a year killed by police. Over what? Usually victimless crimes. Over confrontations created by police who, because we don't have a market, have no accountability for their actions. If a cop murders someone on duty, under color of law, what happens to them? They get a paid vacation or maybe a desk job, maybe a reprimand, maybe a slap on the wrist. But are they held accountable for the loss of value? No, of course not. This goes back to the basic concept of tort law. That is compensation for damages. We do not have a fair tort system in this country. Poor people are denied access to justice services, which means that you can steal and damage other people's property, including their lives, knowing that you will not be held properly accountable. We have a legal system, not a justice system, and it's time to put an end to it so that shootings like this, whether by vigilante former cops or by current cops, are not allowed to happen.